In this video, we're going to talk about how do you know if you're and when you're wealthy. And before we get into that, I want to say thank you to the people who bought training. I want to say thank you to the people who are about to buy training. And I want to say shout out to the Nerd Tribe. We are effectively resetting the YouTube channel for that top 30%. The conversation on the first video in this series was pretty interesting. I saw well-developed paragraphs. I saw sensible comments. Let's keep the conversation going. So we have defined wealth at $5 million or more. And there's a lot of people who, who agree with me. Now, there was a, some people's like, how do you know you're rich? And I will give you a case of two people I know. I know a girl who's a real estate investor. She has about 30 houses and she buys her stuff. It has to be rehabbed. She doesn't buy rental ready property. She buys trash properties, properties with issues. And that's how she's made a lot of money. Um, a second person, he inherited 20 houses from his dad. And I've known both of them for a while. And her trajectory, she didn't really start to feel rich. Or let, let, let's go ahead and talk about her situation. She has 30 houses. About 20 of these houses are paid for. So she has a cash flowing business. So even though her net worth is around three, three point five million, her cash flow position is quite high. Her cash flow position is about sixty, seventy thousand dollars a month, which is seven hundred thousand dollars a year. And it's real estate. And because it's real estate and she has depreciations, she doesn't pay a lot in taxes. So her 700000 is close to someone else making a million a year. And the same thing with the other person who inherited 20 houses. His real estate portfolio is up about to 60 houses. And the person who inherited the 20 houses and they were all paid for was instantly wealthy because once his father died and you know, he wasn't doing badly before his father died. He wasn't doing bad at all, but he was able to realize because those 20 houses back then was bringing in about 40,000 a month. He was able to do things because here's the thing. This is how you know, that you are wealthy when your money gives you utility. And once again, there's two real estate investors, one worth about 3.5, maybe 4 million. The other one's worth 10 million easy, but their paths were different, even though they're both doing real estate. And I will speak on my situation. When I became wealthy, my life radically changed. I was able to do what I wanted to do, when I wanted to do it, with who I wanted to do it. And once again, I have a $265,000 car that was in a position to pay cash for. Um, 2021, I bought two cars and spent 200K in one month. So when you get wealthy, you can do what you want to do. Number one, I don't even worry about my health insurance. I don't worry about I don't worry about basic needs and necessities such as rent. I don't even worry about that. That's not even a factor into my account in my life because paying those bills represents such a small portion of my overall net worth. I don't even think about it. So when you are wealthy, your money has utility. And this is why I said 5 million versus the 1 million or the one or the 2 million, because many of those millionaires, even though technically on paper, they are millionaires. They don't have utility. This is one of the reasons there's this couple on YouTube, Sarah, and I, I can't think of their names. I can see their faces. 
and they have 10 rental houses that pay them $4,000 per month and they do YouTube. And honestly, they make way more money from YouTube than they do from the rental properties. And the utility, you know, that's not a good example. You know what's a good example? Richard Fain is a good example. Richard Fain has on his YouTube channel the reason that he financed cars. And this video was many months ago. Now, recently, Richard bought another car and he paid cash. And his excuse was, you know, the markets are down. It's not a good place. So I go ahead and buy this car. That's 100 percent false. Richard Fain and Graham Stephan changed up their habits when their money changed. Richard, I would estimate, was probably worth one point five, maybe two million from his real estate and stock portfolio. But then when he came to YouTube and he started a business and he has a video where he says he's made a million dollars in the last two years. That's what's changed his mentality. And that's what changed Graham Stephan's mentality. Because when you have enough money to have utility where you can spend how you want to spend, you can, you know, because I, I actually put up a video on the old Savage Finance talking about how I thought that was bullshit. I didn't think Richard, because here's the argument. Uh, Richard Fain and Will Motivation both put these videos that the reason they finance cars is their money is over here working in investments and they don't want to disturb their investments to buy a depreciating asset. So you want to go out and get in debt versus being cash flow and you know cash flow uh, cash flow clean you know it, it just didn't and the credit plug agreed with me because here's the here's the simple truth they cannot or in the case of Richard Fain Richard couldn't have paid cash for a car before he came to YouTube before he started his consulting business he wasn't in a position to do that now after with his YouTube revenue and his consulting company and his affiliate marketing revenue uh, Richard's easily in the position to pay cash for a car. See, that's what's changed. And this is one of the reasons that I am, you know, I think Richard's not a bad person, but Richard is more like do this, do this. But Richard isn't talking about what he did to change his financial trajectory. And once again, and someone put in the comments, you could not consider you're a millionaire unless you had a million dollars cash liquid. And I, 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 I seriously agree with that because it comes back to utility, because let's say you're a real estate investor and you have 10 rental houses and you have 10 mortgages. And after paying the mortgage and the taxes, your your 10 houses cash flow to about two thousand dollars a month or twenty four thousand dollars a year. You have leveraged a lot of other people's money, but you're nowhere close to rich or even wealthy because you, your money doesn't have utility. You can't go out and buy a Porsche. You can't go out and buy a house and pay cash. And this is one of the things that we're going to see in this um, upcoming crash. We're going to see because right now. There are people who are making billions of dollars in the stock market right now. There are people who are making billions of dollars with real estate right now. These are heavily skilled, technically sound operators. They're not hustlers. They're not. Um, they're not these. They're not playing around with the money thing, because like once again, now that we have a firm definition of what wealth is, starts at five million. Uh, one commenter said maybe 10 million, because at this point you become what I call irrevocably wealthy. There is really virtually nothing you can do to get poor again, especially at 10 million At 10 million. That, I mean, unless you develop, even if you develop a, a serious cocaine habit, 10 million net worth is enough to feed that cocaine habit and still leave plenty of money left over. Plenty of money left over. So 
That's how you know that you're wealthy. When your money has the utility to liberate your life. Uh, I see this and this is with the fire movement. You see a lot of members of the fire movement who are pathologically cheap. They have reached their fire number of maybe 750,000, maybe a million in the stock market. But their money doesn't have the utility to give them a luxurious lifestyle. And, you know, this is one of the things that I am considering and this is one of the things I'm going to do. I tried to retire in 2012. I found out that retirement wasn't for me. And good thing I did not retire in 2012 because eight years later, I made more money in one year than I ever made in my life, really in a few months. So going forward, this is my wealth plan. I'm going to have a company that's up and running that I'm going to hire people to operate while I just sit back and collect cash. That's my retirement plan. I'm not going to um, stash a whole bunch of money away and then hope that the markets don't fail and hope that the markets don't crash because we have a lot of people who are millionaires at the beginning of this year who are not millionaires anymore. So that's something to be taken in consideration. Their money, because it's so asset based. And once again, to the commenter, I agree. If you don't have a million cash in the bank, I don't think you should be walking around beating your chest. I'm a millionaire. I, I, I just don't. Because once again, I can tell you that when you reach a certain cash situation where your money has utility, and that's the key. You're wealthy when your money has the utility to liberate you from working a normal job. You have enough money that when you're wealthy that you could do whatever you want. If you wanted to go to London, you don't have to wait until the tickets are on sale. When you're wealthy, when you're wealthy, you could do what you want, when you want, how you want, where you want. And until you get to that position, and that's why a lot of people in that one to three ish million dollar range, they can't do that. They many of them could not take a month off. I want you to think about this. You're a millionaire on paper. But you cannot take a month off from your job because that would create some serious cash flow issues for your net worth. Once again, I will stand on this. I feel for you to be considered wealthy. You need to be five million and above. Now, let's talk about rich. Now, you can get rich at 250k per year you can get rich now the difference is wealth like I, I will give you an example of wealth wealth 2019 i had a heart attack did i have to leave my house no did i have to sell my cars no did my credit go bad no because i had wealth that sustained me even though i wasn't working for seven months if that didn't show you that i was wealthy because there's a lot of people once again, shout out to the 30 um, percent. There's a lot of people. It's like, you ain't wealthy, man. You ain't wealthy. You got to be on YouTube to make your money. I know how you're making your money. I know how you're making your money. And the jealousy is literally dripping off of the compliment because they cannot start a YouTube channel and make money. But getting rich is a totally different ball game. Now. I didn't realize it that that year that I was I had a job and I started my first business and I had close to three hundred thousand dollars cash in the bank. I was rich, but I didn't realize it. I felt well, I, I felt rich. I should I should take a few steps back. I felt rich because I could do what I wanted. I mean, you know, for me. The ability to pay cash for a luxury car, get exactly what you want, get it specked out the way that you want. I was rich and I was I didn't understand. And I got rich very quickly. It took me 
two and a half years to go from living in a boarding house to getting rich. So you can get rich fairly quickly. Now, I was rich from that point on, and I was rich when I was in the storage auction business, but I didn't get wealthy until YouTube. I didn't get wealthy because here's the thing. Even though I was rich, I had to work. And YouTube has presented an opportunity like that first million. I for about two years, I was working maybe four hours a week. So when I got wealthy, I had more money than when I was rich. But I worked way, way less. So that's the difference because you can get rich starting a business. You can like you can get rich very quick. You can get rich, but it took me about, you know, start to finish about 3 years to get wealthy. And the difference between wealth is once you have built your wealth, it's a job of maintaining it and as long as you maintain it, you always have money. You always have money. You don't worry of inflation. All the wealthy people are not even worried about it. They're not. They don't even feel inflation. The wealthy people don't feel inflation. And to a great degree, many rich people are not feeling inflation. But here's the issue with just being rich. If you have a business or you have a job that provides you a high income and you're rich, the minute that you stop doing that, like, um, once again, when I shut down, when my partner got cancer and we had to shut down the um, storage auction business, fortunately, I was sitting on a large cash reserve, but the money just stopped. And what I had to do was put myself on a budget of $1,800 per month until I had more money coming in because I knew from experience that. When you just have money saved and you're spending your money saved and you're not working, that money goes very, very quickly if you're not careful. It can go so quick. So I use that money July, August, September, October, and I started making money October 2009 from YouTube. But there's a vast difference in like it's better to be rich than to be poor. And it's better to be wealthy than to be rich. But the the signal for when you reach the status of being wealthy, your money has utility. Your money protects you. Your money protects you. You don't have to work like I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you an idea of what wealth presents to you. I'm in a high rise and I'm not particularly fond of the environmental element of this rise. So because I am wealthy, if I find a better situation, I will break the lease, which will constitute me having to pay a fine, usually one month's rent. I ain't even worried about that. But once again, I have so much going on that I'm not really looking. But uh, once I get some things sorted out, I'm going to start looking. And if I find a better situation, I'm out of here. I can do that because I have money. I don't have to live in a situation I don't want to live in. And this is one of the reasons I did not buy a house because the market was nuts. And I really didn't know because, you know, parts of me think about leaving Georgia. And I didn't want to be locked into a rental, you know, have a house and then I have to rent it out and keep up with that. I didn't want to have to worry about that. So. That's just how your money protects you when you're wealthy. When you're wealthy, you're able to do and live and be a certain way that the average person can't even dream of because there's so much money out there. There's so much going on in the world, but many, many people cannot see that because they don't understand, number one, how to build wealth because once again we've defined wealth at five million and how do you build that because if you don't have a job that's extremely high paying 
it's going to be very hard for you to invest your wealth, your way to that kind of wealth, unless you engage in options trading, which is kind of risky, which it can be very risky. So that's how you know when you're wealthy, when your money has utility. And like I've seen so many people who have multiple rental properties who are literally marginally better off than the average person. They're just marginally better off than the average person. They don't have any real wealth. Like they can't go out and buy a $60,000 Rolex Daytona. They can't go out and buy a $265,000 Porsche. They can't do it because their money doesn't have that type of utility. And I feel whether you choose to act upon those needs, let's say you have $1.5 million cash in the bank you have a cash flowing business that cash flows gross revenue of two million a year. You have a million dollar home that's paid off and you don't really like Porsches. You know, you're, you're not a car person and you just drive a regular car. That's cool. And there are many people. There are some people who are in that situation where they have a lot of wealth, but they don't show it. But. If they wanted to go out and buy a Porsche, they could do it. If they wanted to go out and buy a Rolex, they could do it. And because they have so much cash on hand, it changes your it changes how you look at the world. When you have a lot of cash on hand, you just don't sweat certain things. You just don't worry about certain things. So that's the sign that you know when you are wealthy is when your money has the utility to liberate your life. And until you get to that point, because you could be rich and you could be trapped with your job or business where you have to work. I haven't worked, well, the car business. And that was one of the reasons I hated the car business because the car business had me working 16, 17, 18 hour days. And I hated that because it robbed me of my freedom and my time. And that's one of the reasons I got rid of it, because um, I will tell you, 2020, I made three million dollars in one year working less than six hours a day and not working every day. And then I had this car rental business that was extremely expensive to set up and the profit margins were pathetic and I was working more. See. People didn't understand because I have a lot of people who come for me and it's like, well, you, you didn't do the real car because they don't understand the life that I had before the car rental business. I was making millions of dollars from the comfort of home. I didn't have to go anywhere. I didn't have to meet anyone. I was doing it all through the Internet. So when I had that kind of thing and this whole thing of having to meet people and be there and get cars fixed and talk to him. It was just a complete hassle because people don't understand the life that I had before I got in that business. And now I'm back to that life. And honestly, my behavior, my mood was completely crappy uh, until I got rid of that business, until I got rid of that business. So. For you to know you're wealthy, your money has to have utility. And if you have a paper net worth where on paper you are technically a millionaire, but you can't pay cash for a car, uh, I wouldn't be walking around bragging that I'm a millionaire. Seriously, because once again, you're technically a millionaire. I cannot get away from that. I can't I cannot take that away from you. Technically, you're a millionaire. But you are a millionaire that can't do much with your money unless you sell something. And that r reduces your net worth by selling stuff. So once again, you're wealthy when your money has utility. You can do things. It liberates you. It protects you. That's when you're wealthy. But you can be rich and make a lot of money and pretty much buy a Porsche. You could be rich and buy a Porsche. You could be rich and live in a million dollar house, but you're on this little treadmill. You're on this treadmill 
that you can't get off. And that's the difference, because when you're rich, you have to work, you have to be present. But when you're wealthy, you wake up to money. That's the difference. So let me know your thoughts and opinions. And I'm going to put this here. Um, if you were, you know, there's, there's going to be a whole nother video because uh, there's going to be some new training that's coming up. And it's going to be because, like I said, I'm shutting down B-School for Hustlers and I'm creating brand new training. There will not be the training from B-School for Hustlers to the new platform. It's going to be completely brand new training. And I'm going to say why. Uh, one of the reasons is I have learned so much. In the last three years, what I have learned is massive and it's going to be completely new training. The business side is going to be completely new and the YouTube side, the intellectual property, I call it the digital nomad. That's going to be completely new. It's going to be 100 percent new training. And if you're a previous student of B-School for Hustlers, you will get this new training and you get to keep your old training because I'm not moving it. I'm not you know, you, you still have access to that. But. I feel that those people who bought the old training will be in a great position to see how much better the new training is. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to participate, because like I said, at the moment, there is nothing there, nothing there. But at probably give me I'm going to start posting content there um, this week and I'm going to start building that out. And then once I start getting a significant part of the course built out, the price is going to go up. So what you want to do is go below and get into these new courses now because the content's going to be crazy. The content's going to be better and it's going to serve you. And there's going to be some com some topics and conversations that I've never had before that will be in these courses. So you want to go ahead and get in them ASAP.